taboo. Speak, you, speak loudly because the giddy hens are really excited. <laughs> Do you know another Mississippi poet named Buck Downs? No, I Ever heard of him? Oh, okay. He lives in Washington, D.C. I just was, you said, in one of your poems, you said something that reminded me of some of the things that he's written. And I just wondered if you know that. And the name is Buck Downs? Uh-huh. I'll write that down. Thank you. Or the Brown. <laughs> Other questions? From human beings, not from any hands? <laughs> I have a question also for Babu, actually. So, being the first African American anything is always, I'm sure, very, you know, just has a lot of challenges and really difficult. And I'm wondering if being the first African American poet laureate of Madison, just what was your experience uh, in that? Was it just exclusively positive? Was the culture prepared for that? Well, thank you, Nick. That's a really good question. Uh, first of all, it really hurt me a lot in Madison, too, you know that a little African-American girl didn't even consider poetry as a career. So I'm very connected and in wanting especially children and young people to experience the joy of poetry. Because even if you don't want to be a professional or make a career out of it, poetry is a wonderful way to just express yourself in the world and to be healed. It was a fantastic opportunity because it stretched to me further than I uh, thought I ever could be stretched. <laughs> and for all the years I was Madison Poet Laureate, I had to make sure I drove carefully. I didn't want, oh, the first African American, she's got the ticket. She's being, so I, I really was. I was very much more circumspect about how I behaved in the world. But it was a great opportunity to represent poetry for the city of Madison but also to remind people of, of the legacy, because again, most people think African Americans are so recent in Wisconsin, it's simply not the truth. Other questions? Angie, you have a question for Babu and a question for Ryan. Babu, other than Wendell Brooks and Langston Hughes, mm -hmm. what other um, African American poets have influenced you? Thank you. Well, I don't know if you've heard of a poet called Sonia Sanchez, but I love her because she puts, she puts sounds into poetry. I've memorized a line, and in my mind, I see my history standing like a shy child, singing that ancient chant, hey, yay, 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 hey, yay, 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 yay. And that's from a book of poetry called Blue Black Magical Black Women. And I'm thinking, if a poet can put sounds into a poem, I just find that so fantastic. So there have been so many influences um, along the way. But she particularly influenced me because she kind of dedicated her life to art. Uh, I studied under her once and she said, the first thing she teaches poetry is to make poets to make their bed. <laughs> if you can't have the discipline of making your bed every morning. <laughs> so I really enjoyed her. She's one of, uh, what is she called, the 1960s poets. But I really, really love her work and I love the life of commitment that she has to herself and to the world. Thank you for asking. Right, as a singer-songwriter myself, one of the things that I struggle with is not so much the words, but the melody. And end up ending, sometimes ending up, I really use this melody in a song. <laughs> Where do you get your different melodies from? Um, I think basically I just uh, start playing chords. I'm originally a piano player, a stride piano player by trade. And uh, by, um, I sit down on the piano a lot. A lot of my songs are written on piano. And coming up with a you know complete instrumental song basically and in my head as I'm writing the melody on the piano I'm actually coming up with just random phrases and words and stuff that sometimes get written down or 
I record it somehow, or, you know, but it's just basically a lot of unconscious stuff. So some of the melodies may sound, you know, similar and stuff, but, you know, I think it's really from the unconscious, you know. So you do more of the melodies first than the lyrics? Yeah, okay. yeah, totally. And I'm writing the melody and the lyrics kind of at the same time. Just rough copies, rough drafts of it all. So, thanks. Do you have any songs out right now? Any labels? Any records? I mean, you kind of look like the country style. <laughs> but when I heard your music, it, it really got the best. You know, it's, it's, I was just kind of curious. Yeah, um, I've got an uh, album on iTunes, and it's, all, it's on the whole internet kind of stuff. Um, I put one out uh, about five years ago now called The Great Unknown. And then I'm working on one I just finished up. Uh, it's a smaller acoustic kind of one um, in Madison that I finished up. But uh, yeah, it's out there. But I need to get more out there too. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? How much is the right on now? Um, you can get online for like 10 bucks. Otherwise, oh, I've got $10! <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Going once, going twice. It has been a beautiful fall night. <laughs> Thank you guys all so much. It's summer, that's a joke. Thank you guys all so much for coming out. And thank you for watching.